What's up everyone? Welcome to the channel. Welcome to my first actual YouTube video. My name's Junior and I run a photography business called Optical Shooters based in London. So today's topic is photography niches. In the past couple of years I've been running my business, I've dabbled in a couple of photography niches. I've done food photography, fashion photography, e-commerce, just to name a few. In this video, I want to talk to any up and coming photographers who are trying to establish a business. I want to talk about the pros and cons of the different niches and which niche I enjoy the most. Now, you've probably heard online a photographer saying that you need a specific niche. I agree to an extent. My perspective was when I first started, how would I know what I'm good at if I haven't tried it out? There's that famous quote that says, Jack of all trades, master of none. But to be honest, being a jack of all trades and doing different types of niches has helped me skill wise helped my business propel and also helped me broaden my clientele. So my advice to any beginner is try out everything. Right, the first photography niche I wanna talk about today is street photography, hear me out. When I first bought my camera, I didn't have a clue on what I was doing. My Instagram feed was filled with a lot of street photographers. So what I done is I went online and learned how to use my camera especially in manual mode. The pros of doing street photography was that I was thrown into the deep end. I had to learn how to properly expose for the different times of the day, the different weather conditions. I also learned about composition and how to properly frame an image. I also learned how to use my camera body, its lens, the settings in full, just so I can get some good results. Now, like everything, there are cons. The cons for doing street photography for me was that I was trying to establish a business and generate income. Unless you have a good following and a large audience and are very good at marketing, it's very hard to generate income from street photography. You're going to have to sell products like prints of the shots that you take when you're out and about. Another con is that it's not easy. You have to get out there and travel. You have to be able to travel to various locations because if you're going to the same spots over and over again, it may not be beneficial. Niche number two I want to talk about is food photography. I've been able to shoot for restaurants and private labels. Shooting food photography can be daunting, but it can also be very lucrative if you do it correctly. To start off with food photography, nine times out of 10, you'll probably only need the equipment that you already own because majority of the time you'll be shooting on location. This is in contrast with other niches that I may talk about because you may need your own space to shoot and get work done. A pro of doing food photography is that the demand is always there. As humans, we need food to survive, so it's always going to be advertised. So if you create a very good system and you can market yourself very well, you might be able to shoot for restaurants, outlets on a regular basis. Like I said at the start, we'll talk about some cons. And some cons of doing food photography is that you're going to be dealing with very small time constraints. You might be shooting on location and have a very specific window where you can get the job done. This is obviously because of food loses its freshness, its appeal, and at the end of the day, you're dealing with perishable items. And I won't lie to you, it can be very stressful. You might be shooting on location, whether it's a kitchen, whether it's a restaurant, and the nature of these establishments is that it's very busy, it's very fast paced. So as a photographer, you have to stay calm and composed so you can get good results. The third niche I want to talk about is e-commerce photography. Shooting e-commerce is just like shooting food photography. It's very lucrative. You can find a very regular client base who needs your services on a regular basis. For example, if you find a client who's a big player in this industry, although they may have their own media teams and marketing staff, they also outsource their work due to the quick turnaround needed for the many products they may sell. E-commerce is at its all-time high and someone is always selling something. With the power of social media and online marketplaces like Etsy, Amazon, eBay, you're going to find clients who need high quality pictures to showcase their goods. You also have the opportunity to upsell with e-commerce photography. If you're skilled with video, you can bundle that up and put that together with the photography and charge extra. You can also offer a photo editing service if brands have their images already. That's just extra income for you. I have shot e-commerce for many different types of products, from jewelry, to vitamins, to clothing. The clients that you can reach are endless. Now, it's not all plain sailing with e-commerce photography. I can tell you that from experience. If you are just starting out, you are most likely a one-person band. So, if you have a high volume of work to deal with, 
This can be overtaxing and you can suffer a burnout. The work involved can also be very repetitive. It can reduce creative satisfaction for any photographers who are very artistic and passionate about their work. Quality control can also be a con. Maintaining a consistent quality across a large volume of work can also be challenging. You have to make sure that you have your own designated space to shoot in. This will help you stay consistent with your lighting and your composition because at the end of the day, client satisfaction is important. Okay, number four. Let's talk product photography. Product photography is probably my most requested service. However, I don't work with everyone that inquires due to the capacity and other reasons that I'll mention later. Now, I like to separate e-commerce and product photography. E-commerce photography is mostly shot on a white plain background for websites and online marketplaces. Whereas product photography are a more creative stylized shot, which can be used for social media, physical marketing materials, or just marketing campaigns in general. I got the idea to dive into product photography because like everywhere else in the world, in the UK, we had a lockdown. I had a spare room to shoot in, so I thought why not? It was also convenient for myself and my clients because they can just send their products through the post at ease. Now, the demand for high quality images are very in demand. If you have a very eye-catching style, you can attract a lot of clients. I have shot for companies which sell products like air freshener, items like sunglasses, even honey. In terms of pros and cons, I would say they're very similar to what I've mentioned with e-commerce photography. But in addition to the cons I've mentioned, I would say you need to have a very creative mind. You will have to be very active in terms of looking up different trends and different styles. You will always have to be finding inspiration too. You also probably need to spend money on sourcing backdrops, props, and making sure these are updated regularly. You don't want to be making the same style of images for your different clients. Another thing you will need to think about is your time. You are more likely going to be spending more time in the edit chair. Product photography will need more manipulation done in post-production rather than a basic edit needed for e-commerce photography. Last but not least, number five is lifestyle photography. Now, not to brag and just to be transparent, this niche has been my most lucrative and most consistent service I offer. I read somewhere online that customers are 60% more likely to buy from a company if they see a picture in their search results. A lifestyle image can communicate to customers how the product they're searching for will look or feel on them. Because of its popularity, a lot of brands want to showcase their products in this way. So photographers who know how to shoot like this are very much in demand. With lifestyle photography, you can get into a wide range of industries you can shoot for. Whether it's someone applying perfume on their skin or someone wearing an expensive watch, you can find and market yourself to a number of diverse clientele. Myself personally, I find it a lot easy and less time consuming to edit a workflow of lifestyle photography images. Now, I wouldn't be a real one if I didn't mention some negatives that can play a part. The competition is very high. With the way social media is right now with TikTok, Reels, Snapchat, video content is always being pushed. I have personally been on a shoot with a brand to shoot lifestyle, but they also hired someone else to shoot the same content with their iPhone. Some companies may want to go down this route because it's more quicker and cheaper for their brand. For someone who's a homebody and an introvert in general, a negative of doing lifestyle photography is that you're always traveling. If you're always getting booked and always getting consistent work, and you have a family for example, you will be away from them most of the time. So any photographers who are looking to get into this, make sure you factor that in and be ready to sacrifice your time with your loved ones. There we have it, five photography niches that up and coming photographers need to be trying out. Bear in mind, this list is what I've managed to explore over the years with a couple of other niches like fashion, events, behind the scenes, and a couple of them more. The point is just begin. Get out there and start shooting, start creating. If you're consistent and your work is of high quality, clients are gonna come calling. If this video was of any value to you, please like, share, and subscribe. Do all of that good stuff for the algorithm. I'll see you on the next one.